In this module, you learn about the logic and basic elements of a cost-benefit analysis and the importance of a sound contextual analysis. It will include with project and without project scenarios and a time preference and discounting, which is the choice of a social discount rate. Economic indicators to conclude on a project's worth will be studied and they are the net present value, the internal rate of return and the benefit to cost ratio. We will also look at the derivation of economic cost and benefits from financial values and finish off with an uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. Some basics about a cost benefit analysis. The cost benefit analysis is a form of analysis derived from accounting. Policymakers and project managers use cost benefit analysis to assess whether an action, plan change, or project is worth undertaking. Whereas a financial cost benefit analysis builds on actual prices, an economic cost benefit analysis integrates the viewpoints of society as a whole. Economic cost benefit analysis is also called social cost benefit analysis. Key steps of a cost benefit analysis include the definition of the target group, definition of parameters of analysis, including time frame, categories of benefits and costs, the discount rate, and indicators of a project worth. They also involve estimating economic benefits and costs under alternative scenarios and comparing net benefits of action to net benefits from business as usual to estimate the added value of action. This will link very much to the alternative scenarios and business as usual that are derived from a study of step five of the ELD six plus one approach on patterns and pressures. We also have computing indicators of viability as a key step and finally a sensitivity analysis. Please recall that as just mentioned, step five of the ELD approach will lead to the business as usual scenario within the cost benefit analysis. The structure of a cost benefit analysis will involve a listing of the total revenues and the total costs and the net revenues or the balance. An example of this can be found in the self-study module on cost benefit analysis. In terms of the context of a cost benefit analysis, it's important that the, the cost benefit analysis matches real life conditions and derives salient results for informed decision making. Participation of local stakeholders in the process is essential. Recall that the constraints faced by stakeholders, the area of interest and the chosen time frame impact the amounts and variation of costs and benefits across stakeholders, space and time. Cost benefit analysis can also be undertaken separately for each stakeholder group or group of stakeholders if deemed necessary. For each scenario, we need to estimate the net benefits, which is basically the benefits minus the costs. So the with project net benefits is equal to the with pro project benefits minus the with project costs. And the without project benefits are the net benefits equal to the without project benefits minus the without project costs. A cost benefit analysis compares the net benefit derived from implementing the project to the without project net benefits for each stakeholder. This results in the incremental net benefit, which is the with project net benefits minus the without project net benefits. There is a need to identify the unit costs and prices for each benefit and each cost. For example, benefits from agricultural yields are equal to the number of hectares cropped times the price per tonne of crop. Another example would be benefits from carbon storage, which is equal to the number of tons of carbon stored times the price for each tonne of carbon. 
All costs and benefits need to be comparable in how they are measured, their currency as well as across time. Costs can be decomposed into variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs vary with the quantity used. The higher the quantity used, the higher the cost. Fixed costs do not vary with the level of utilization. For example, insurances, building depreciation. Real prices can be derived from observed nominal prices by correction for inflation. The gross margin and net income can then be computed for a given year as follows, where the gross margin is equal to the benefits minus the variable costs, but the net income is equal to the gross margin minus the fixed costs. A cost-benefit analysis has to consider the time preferences and a discount rate. People often show a preference for receiving money now rather than later, which is the time preference. It is the same principle behind earning interest on savings in a bank account. To assess whether a project is worth doing, the incremental net benefits need to be made comparable in time before they are summed up. And discounting is the technique used to express equivalent economic or financial values at a chosen point in time. Costs and benefits occurring in the future are discounted to obtain the value they would have if they were occurring today. This is equivalent to the present value. The current value of future benefits and costs is computed as follows. Present value equals a discount factor times the value. The discount factor directly reflects on time preferences. One of the most common form formulas for the discount rate is presented in the slide. The further in the future the cost and or benefit occurs, the less it is worth today. And the higher the rate of discount is, the quicker an amount of money loses value in time. The choice of discount rate is often controversial. The choice of a discount rate is not neutral and can influence the decision to undertake a project or not. The discount rate is generally higher in less developed countries because farmers in less developed countries have a much shorter time frame in terms of their immediate benefits. Future generations are not yet here to signal their time preference and their influence tends to be ignored when choosing a discount rate. By design, a lower discount rate assumes more intergenerational equity than a higher rate. An example would be the Stern Review on the Economics of Climate Change, which used a discount rate of 1.4%, which was considered very low. A good cost-benefit analysis should include a discussion on the consequences that the chosen discount rate has on the result of the cost-benefit analysis. There are three economic indicators that are usually used to conclude if a project is worth it or not. The first is the net present value. Net present value is the sum of the present value across all the years under consideration. When computed from incremental net benefits, it gives an indication of whether the project will add to the business as usual. The project is considered worth indicating when the net present value is greater than zero, that is positive, and considered not worth undertaking when the net present value is less than zero. The second indicator is the internal rate of return which is the discount rate at which the net present value equals zero. In other words, it corresponds to the maximum interest rate that can be earned from investing resources in a project. The third indicator is the cost-benefit ratio, or rather the benefit-to-cost ratio. Comparison of the present value of an investment decision or project with its initial cost. It is the ratio obtained by dividing the present value of the benefit stream by the present value of the cost stream. Present values are derived using the opportunity cost of capital as the discount rate. 
A project is acceptable if the benefit to cost ratio is greater than or equal to 1. All three indicators are complementary and when possible should be computed to assess a project's worth. They do not necessarily always lead to the same conclusion, in which case a further formal discussion on whether the project is worth undertaking needs to be included with the cost-benefit analysis. The indicators can be computed in a financial as well as in an economic setting. Some words on the derivation of economic costs and benefits from financial values. A financial val analysis is based on the financial costs and benefits to participants, whereas an economic analysis is based on the costs and benefits to society as a whole. Financial costs and benefits are typically observed through market prices, user fees or the like. In the case of ELD studies, the interest is in both economic and financial values. Economic values are sometimes referred to as shadow prices as they are in the shadow of the financial values that can be observed in real life. Economic values correspond to opportunity costs and or the willingness to pay for the goods and services considered from the point of view of society as a whole. One of the easiest ways to undertake an economic cost-benefit analysis is to first perform a financial analysis and then adjust each financial value to derive its economic equivalent. Adjustments between financial and economic values are needed because of market price distortions that arise when markets are not perfectly competitive. The type of adjustment varies with the type of value being considered, whether it's a transfer payment, a traded good, a non-tradable good, or a non-traded, non-tradable good. The reference system adopted for measuring the costs and benefits and the currency, domestic or foreign, in which benefits and costs are expressed. Economic values can be derived or estimated from financial values in three steps. Step one would be the adjustment for transfer payments, including taxes and subsidies. Step two is the adjustment for price distortions in traded goods. And step three is the adjustment for price distortions in non-traded goods, which include tradables that are not traded in practice and non-tradables. Ultimately, the decision to undertake the project or not when indicators are contradictory between the financial and economic analysis will depend on how much priority is given to actual financial flows over the value to society as a whole. It may be socially acceptable, for instance, to go ahead with a development project that leads to small losses for society as a whole, a negative net present value in the economic analysis, but that allows poor stakeholders to benefit from it, which could be a positive net present value in the financial analysis. To improve the confidence of a cost-benefit analysis, it is necessary to undertake uncertainty and sensitivity analyses. A sensitivity analysis aims to assess consequences on the project's economic worth for risks arising from the project itself or external forces. A good sensitivity analysis helps assess the resilience of the consequences of project implementation and its social consequences. This is particularly critical to assess whether livelihoods of already fragile populations can be sustained even under extreme events or not. For a sensitivity analysis, the main quantities and or prices that are likely to change, for example, because of droughts, floods, changes in inputs or fluctuation in commodity prices need to be identified. This can be done in consultation with the relevant stakeholders and or based on local or international expert opinion. The average values originally used in the cost-benefit analysis are changed to new extreme values and the economic indicators of a project's worth are then recalculated. 
If the project is worth doing on average, but not under extreme events, a policymaker might want to consider either not undertaking this project or providing some form of safety net. Alternatively, the values of quantities and prices of inputs can be changed to obtain the switching value, which is the value for which the project becomes economically undesirable. For further information and reading, please refer to the references cited in this slide. Probably the most useful is the first one, the cost-benefit analysis, a practical guide from Snell. If you have questions or require further information, please refer to the link shown on this slide.